What's the difference between the coronavirus family and the uh, the other popular family, influenza virus family? <laughs> Is um, I mean, I, if I were, because you mentioned we should have done a lot more in terms of vaccine development, that kind of thing f- yeah. for coronaviruses. But if I were back then, from my understanding, the thing we should all be afraid of is influenza, like some strong variants Mm -hmm. coming out from that family. That seems like the one that will destroy human (laughs) civilization or uh, or hurt us really badly. I don't know if you uh, agree with this sense, but maybe maybe you can also just clarify what to use is the difference between the families. So it's an interesting difference. They both they both have membranes, right? So then they have spike proteins embedded in them for, and they're different spikes. In fact, the, for for influenza, there there are two main ones. They're called the HA and the NA. Um, but what's inside is RNA, but it's very different RNA. And here we have to explain that. So viruses with RNA can have three different kinds of RNA. They can have what we call plus RNA, they can have minus RNA, or they could have plus minus, actually two strands uh, hybridized together. The plus RNA simply means that if you put that plus RNA in a cell, you know, your cell has ribosomes in it that make the proteins that you need. The ribosomes will immediately latch onto the plus RNA and begin to make proteins. A minus RNA is not the right strand to make proteins. So it has to be copied first. And then the plus minus is both together. So the SARS coronaviruses, all the coronaviruses have plus RNA. So as soon as that RNA gets in the cell, boom, it starts an infectious cycle. Same thing with poliovirus, by the way, which I worked on. Influenza viruses are negative stranded. So they cannot be translated when they get in the cell. So that that's tough for the virus because the cell actually cannot make plus RNA from minus RNA. It doesn't have the enzyme to do it. So the virus has to carry it in inside the virus particle. And then when the minus RNA is in the cell, the virus enzyme makes plus RNAs and those get translated. So it's a big difference. And then in the influenza viruses, not only is it minus RNA, but it's in pieces. It's in eight pieces. We call that segmented, whereas the corona is in one long piece of RNA. So what is that? Is it, they're like floating separately? Yeah, so the genes are on separate pieces. They're all packaged inside that virus particle of influenza virus, but they're in pieces. And why that's important is because if two different influenza viruses infect the same cell, the pieces as they reproduce can mix and out can come a virus with a new assortment of pieces. Mm-hmm. And that allows influenza virus to undergo extremely high frequency evolution. That's why we get pandemics. When we have a new flu pandemics is because somewhere in some animal, two viruses have reassorted and made a new virus that we hadn't seen before. Mm. So so you're, you're, you're talking about kind of biological characteristics, but what, am I incorrect in my intuition that, or from the things I've heard that the influenza vi- family of viruses is, is more dangerous? Like what, what makes it more dangerous to humans? Well, it depends on the, there are many flavors or vintages of influenza virus. Some are dangerous and some are not, right? It depends on which one. Some, like the 1918 apparently was, was very lethal, killed a lot of people. Uh, but more contemporary viruses, we had a pandemic in 2009 of influenza. That wasn't such a lethal virus. We don't know exactly why, but it didn't kill that many people. It, it transmitted pretty well. Is that it, the bird flu one? They're all they're all, all deriving. Birds. That one was called swine influenza. Swine. It seemed to swine, have yeah. started in a pig, but it had bird. It had RNAs from bird influenza viruses. These viruses are all reassortants of different viruses from pigs and birds and mm-hmm. humans. Um, but influenza can cause pneumonia and can kill you, as does. SARS-CoV-2, so it depends on the uh, the virus. So eight, mm. there is another influenza virus that's currently circulating. So right now we have the 2009 pandemic virus that's still around. And then the 1968 pandemic, 
virus, which was the one before 2009, that one is still around too. And that's more lethal. And depending on the season, some seasons, the 2009 virus predominates, some seasons, the 1968. And when the 68 is around, you get more lethality. So we're living with the influenza family. We haven't exterminated them. Right, we never will. Never exterminate them. Why? Well, because every shorebird in the world is infected with them. You know, gulls and terns and ducks and all sorts of things. No, but uh, why can't we develop uh, strong vaccines that defend against? Oh, we could do that, sure. Um, but that would not eliminate them right. from humans. Even if you had the best vaccine, you would never get rid of it in people because there would always be someone who's not vaccinated or in which the vaccine didn't work. You know, no, no vaccine is 100%. Right. So 